The IMF's public spat with Europe over Greece has bruised the Washington-based fund's ego and may limit its influence in resolving future sovereign crises. Here to discuss that, as well as Spain's plight, I'm joined by Rodrigo Rato. He's former head of the IMF and former finance minister of Spain. So, Mr Rato, how damaging has the dispute between the IMF and Europe over Greece been to the IMF's credibility? Oh, I don't think it's been damaging. I think the IMF has stated its position uh, about the need for a sustainable policy regarding <coughs> Greece's debt. And I think that that has um, convinced, at, at least partially, uh, the European, uh, the European uh, uh, ministers. There's been a change in policy regarding Greece, and I think it's a good one. Is that the last change in policy? I don't know, but I will guess no. But doesn't this highlight the IMF's rather dogmatic approach and inflexible approach to crisis resolution? No, I think it, it, it reveals a, a very long experience of the need of, uh, of debt to have a level that is sustainable. Uh, and I think the IMF has a long experience in dealing with uh, uh, countries with hang-ups in, in debt. And I think that in that respect, uh, well, I'm, I'm not a tech, I'm not a, I cannot tell you if the level is 120 or 115 or 122, but um, what well, 120 is like what Italy has and around what Belgium has. So it looks like um, a level that we see that is functioning in some other European countries. And it, it, uh, I think that, uh, well, it's up to the staff of the IMF to probably define technically the level, but um, what is clear is that uh, it was some needed, some, some changes were needed regarding the, the Greek strategy. And as I said, uh, I think the ones that have been implemented are probably in the right direction. But that doesn't mean that we will not have to see more changes in the future. More changes in the future, I presume you might be referring to OSI, um, official sector involvement. Um, official creditors taking losses on their loans to Greece. Do you think the IMF should uh, take part in that process too? I don't think that's feasible. Why not? If, if it's okay for European lenders to take losses, why not? Well, because uh, the IMF is a global institution and uh, is a, it has never accepted losses uh, from Latin American countries, uh, North African countries, Asian countries, Eastern European countries ex-Soviet Union countries, um, I don't think it's feasible. So I, don't th I, th I don't think the Europeans can ask for that. What about Spain? Um, you're obviously former finance minister of Spain. Um, shouldn't Madrid be making the formal request for aid from a position of relative strength, i.e. now when yields are 5.5%, rather than a position of weakness? when it's forced to buy the market when yields might be 7 8%. Well, if you put things in that, in that context, of course. But I think the question is also to what extent, and I think the Spanish government has said it uh, more than once, mm, what are the, 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 the consequences and the, the commitments that come with the request of aid? And I think that is, of course, up to the Spanish authorities and the European authorities to, to identify. Uh, but I think that the position of the Spanish government is very clear. Uh, aid cannot be requested unless uh, there is a clear uh, mm, mm, commitment or a clear goal that uh, the main problem of the Spanish economy right now, which is the divide uh, between finances inside the euro area and the, the lack of, of, of a single monetary policy for the whole euro area, is solved. What are the risks, though, in waiting so long for the Spanish economy and for the Spanish banking system? Well, uh, if you ask me the same question, I have to give you the same answer. It depends what are the commitments and the, and the goals of the European authorities regarding how to mend the fact that the transmission mechanism in Europe is not working. Final question, again on Spain. Uh, one in four Spaniards are out of work. Youth unemployment is over 50%. Do you think this is a price worth paying for the economic and structural reforms and austerity being pushed through in Spain right now? No, I think that uh, it shows the, the mistakes that the Spanish uh, uh, governments uh, have made in not restructuring their labor laws earlier. Um, Spain has, in the last 30 years, always had uh, a big unemployment figures regarding Europe. Uh, uh, and it has always waited to the, to the most serious crisis 
to reform their labor laws. The first reform were done in the mid-90s and they worked and this reform was done six months ago and is working but of course as also with the banking system uh, 2008-2007 would have been much better years to do it.